Hello everybody, this is Ryan Paulson, Sovereign Citizen. This is my channel. And um, I want to be able to properly teach everybody step-by-step uh, -step on how to effectively file for your UCC1, how to become a real sovereign, how to access your trust account, how to basically gain control of what is rightfully yours, your straw men account. And a lot of people don't even understand what it is or basically the fact that when your parents sign your birth certificate, they're basically putting you into a government system and creating a, a, a debt debtor's account. You're basically a debt. You're not even a person. And when you basically go inside of a courtroom and you notice how there's all capital letters on your name inside those motions, they're addressing you as a corporate fiction. You're a corporation. You're not a human person. You're basically lost at sea or a dead person. There are a lot of ways that you can go about doing this. Um, but first, I want to be able to explain to you that I am an attorney. I'm, I'm sorry, I'm a lawyer. I'm not an attorney. I want people to know there's a big difference between a lawyer and an attorney. A lawyer is somebody that has knowledge of the law. Someone that practices the law. Someone that is not allowed to represent you in court. And I want you to understand when, when somebody, like an attorney, does represent you in court, they're basically saying that you're, they're you. They speak for you. They are you. So everything that they say, you're saying. They have the right to speak for you. A lawyer does not have the right to speak for you. A lawyer is a practicing attorney that knows the law or is practicing what the law is and basically is establishing a sense of what the law really is. And I've been going to the court system for quite some time now, about over, over 10 years. I've learned so much. I'm actually, I'm, I am in school right now, um, finishing up my bachelor's degree. Um, so I'm not in law school yet. I, I am working on my, my bachelor's, this is my last year, and then I'll be going off to law school. But there is a lot of things that I've learned um, in the court system. And I want to give you some valuable information. One would be that when you go in inside of a traffic court or you know a criminal court or anything that has to do with like a corpus delicti, which is like an injured party, it's just a law term. Um, it's it's a different language, basically. Um, so they always tell you, the judge always asks you, how do you plead? They want you to plead either not guilty or guilty, right? Well, obviously, you'd say not guilty. That's what most people would do. That's what remotely anybody would do, I guess, in that situation, right? But they don't tell you one thing. There's not just only a not guilty or guilty plea. You could actually challenge their jurisdiction right up front. Because once you say not guilty in the courts, in the courtroom, you're essentially saying that a claim actually does exist. You're giving them jurisdiction when you say not guilty. You're saying that the charges that they're bringing forth exist, and you're acknowledging that they exist by pleading not guilty. 
you're just trying to now say that either you didn't do it or you're trying to find a way out of the charges that have been brought against you. But filing a jurisdiction motion, a challenge jurisdiction, and basically telling them the basic seven elements of jurisdiction, number four, by the way, is somebody that is an accuser that cannot be an agency, it cannot be a police officer, it has to be some physical, identifiable person, an actual citizen, that comes to court and signs a complaint against you. So an accuser has to come to court. And I want to I want to let you guys know once again, it cannot be an agency, a police officer. It has to be some identifiable person. And they don't want you to know that. So anytime you go in front of a courtroom that has a traffic violation, the police officer is the accuser. And they know that they're not supposed to be the accuser. So what you're supposed to do is supposed to file the jurisdiction motion and you have to let them know and break down what the seven elements of jurisdictions are. And it's really vital to let them know that number four states that there has to be an accuser. There has to be. And when there's not an accuser, they don't have jurisdiction. It means that there is no criminal case being took in place. Or there is no valuable complaint. This automatically gives you grounds for dismissal. Automatically. And what I could do, um, obviously not in this video, but what I could do is display a tutorial on how to actually file a motion to challenge jurisdiction in a traffic court or one very, this could help a lot of people, it's very beneficial in criminal court too. So let's say you're getting charged with a drug offense, possession of narcotics or a controlled substance or any kind of drug. When there is not an injured party, which there never is in a, in a possession charge, you shouldn't be getting charged with a criminal offense. There needs to be a injured party. And there isn't when it comes down to those type of criminal cases. Now these types of uh, gray areas in the law that I utilize against the system will not work when there is an accuser. I want to remind you that. Let's say you've damaged some property. You've stolen some property. You've kidnapped somebody. You raped somebody. You beat somebody up. You killed somebody. Anytime there is an injured party involved that is going to come to court as the accuser and point you out inside of a courtroom alleging that you committed such crimes, these common law, um, the common law law <laughs> will not be uh, sufficient enough inside these courtrooms. You can't use it. It's just not going to work. The law of the land is common law. And when you, when you, when you go inside these courtrooms, you're in Almirati courtrooms. It's the law of the sea. It's international contract law. So whenever you sign like an identification card or a driver's license, you're, you're, you're entering into a contract with the state. And you're essentially giving up your rights when you do that. But they don't tell you that. So these contracts are through deceit. And that is also a way you can get out of these traffic tickets as well, is by acknowledging to the court that you were not aware of such contract, that you did not enter such contract willfully, voluntarily, or knowingly, or intelligently, and you were not aware that you were essentially giving up your right to travel, which is a 
uh, is, is something that you have a right to do. It's a liberty, a civil liberty. Now, it's not an amendment. People need to understand that there is a big difference between the 14th Amendment or the Freedom of Movement uh, amendment that there's it's it's different than the civil liberty right to travel it's completely different just like you need a license to do business to make money to essentially for profit for commerce and that is basically what you're doing when you're entering into these driver's license contracts your Entering into a contract with the state saying that you're going to be using or occupying your vehicle for business profit compensation fair fee or higher Now if you're not doing that if you're not an uber driver if you're not a Lyft driver if you're not a delivery driver if you're not a taxi driver You don't need a license. You don't need those plates You only need a license when you are in engaging in business for commercial purposes you're making money I mean it makes sense doesn't it I mean when you think about it you need a license to sell alcohol you need a license to own a restaurant to do business to, to conduct business whenever you're making money you need a license for that so why do I need a license to utilize a right that I have? Because they're, they're not allowed to attach a fee, license, a right. They're just not allowed to do that. They are lying to a lot of people just to gain revenue. The driver's license is a huge revenue system for the courts and the police. And all these agencies that work inside the city and the state, they rely on this kind of stuff. It is a cash cow system. People need to understand that. And during my next uh, video, I'm going to be able to explain to you and, and give you a tutorial on how to file these motions, what case law you could use that's very beneficial for your case, like as far as the Supreme Court uh, overturning convictions already saying that there, there is no requirement for a driver's license. The, uh, there's also case laws giving you the right to travel. There is just mountains of case law. Uh, I can't recite them off the top of my head, but there are, I mean, there's over like a hundred of these. And there's a lot that actually have been done in Cook County. And they're very, very beneficial. And, and I get really tired of, of, you know, most of my channel is comical for entertainment. But I really want to be able to explain to people how, how this really works. And how it's been working for me. And how it can work for you. And this information is, is so valuable that it should be known to everybody. And I want to be able to get people to actually believe this stuff because a lot of people don't. A lot of people are brainwashed, controlled by the media. They have absolutely no mind of their own. They believe whatever they've been told. And if it goes against what they've been told, it doesn't make sense to them. Or it's not true. It's not factual. It, they don't believe it. And, and it's a shame. Why do you, I mean, these attorneys need licenses now, but when Abraham Lincoln was a lawyer, he didn't need a license. Abraham Lincoln was a lawyer. Did anybody know that? The attorney is for a bar association membership card. Okay? It's a corporation that they've made to basically make money off people. And going back to the UCC1, you could gain access to your strawman, to your trust account, 
Your trust account is your birth certificate when they sign you over to the government so they can exchange money with foreign agencies, your debt to them, and they collect money off your name. They make money off your name. They borrow money off your name. And you can gain access to that account. And you can claim your trust account and have full access to all the funds that is being used by the government for yourself. You can eliminate all your debts. You could basically go inside of a, an abandoned property, fix it up a little bit, and file a lien and claim it as yours. I'll be able to go over that with you guys as well. This video is just basically a start of what I will be doing instead of doing my typical comical uh, videos. Because uh, obviously it gets nowhere with my viewers. I, I just get a lot of negative reactions and, and <laughs> I'm tired of that. I, I actually want people to succeed at what I've succeeded and the, the knowledge that I've gained because it's truly inspiring, it's valuable and beneficial. That's all I have for you guys today. I hope you enjoyed my channel. Uh, my channel's name obviously is Ryan Esquire. Uh, my name is Ryan Alton though. Um, and like I said, I'm a practicing uh, lawyer. And uh, I hope you guys can uh, benefit from me. Thanks.